This is the 10th video in the Edexcel P3 revision tutorials. Today we will be looking at radiation in relation to its dangers and its uses in hospitals. In this video we will be looking at the dangers and precautions against ionising radiation. We will be evaluating the issues surrounding the use of radiation in medicine and we'll be looking at the uses of radioactive substances in the diagnosis of medical conditions. Recently in the news, some of the information regarding the death of Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko has come out. Mr Litvinenko was killed by radiation poisoning in a Japanese restaurant using an alpha-emitting source that once ingested would have been unable to have escaped the body whilst being incredibly ionising and therefore dangerous. In order to protect those that work with radiation, we have several pieces of technology to help protect them. People who work with radiation a lot wear something called a dose emitter. Here is a dose emitter here, which records the exposure to radiation where a radiation dose will be measured in sieverts here. The symbol before it is the symbol mu, meaning micro. So this would be in micro sieverts per hour. There are two ways which we can be exposed to radiation. And these are irradiation or contamination. Irradiation is when radiation hits us from the outside, like background radiation. We're exposed to large amounts of irradiation on a daily basis. The other way, and much more dangerous way that we are exposed to radiation, is via contamination, which is when we take a radioactive source inside us, like in the case of Alexander Litvinenko. However, we can also use radioactive sources in medicine. In medicine, we can use radioactive isotopes as tracers. A tracer is a small amount of radioactive material we use to detect things. For example, tumours or thyroid problems. An external detector then follows the progress of the tracer around the body to create an image such as this one here. A well-known example is iodine-131, which is used to detect if the thyroid gland is absorbing iodine as it should. We can then see how long the radioactive isotope is in the thyroid. For medicinal tracers, you want to use a beta or gamma source with a short half-life. A popular examination question looks at why. The reason why you wouldn't use an alpha source is that it would be unable to escape the body, as it would be unable to penetrate the skin. You want to use one with a short half-life in order to reduce the dangers to both the patient and the doctor. Another way we can use radioactive isotopes is in the creation of positron emitters for positron emission tomography. So, positron emission tomography, or PET scanners. PET scanners use beta plus emitters in order to release positrons within an organ. They are used to build up a 3D image of something in the body by detecting the radioactive emissions that come from the tracer. You can use them to show areas of damaged tissues, for example in the heart to look at blood flow or in the brain to look at epilepsy. You can also use them to look at the metabolic activity in tissues as cancer cells have a much higher metabolism so PET can be used to examine active or benign tumours. Benign tumours will have much much lower metabolic activity. So how does PET work? In order to carry out PET you inject the patient with a substance the body uses, for example, glucose. This positron emitting isotope will have a very short half life. So, in the glucose, you will use something like oxygen 15. 
the positrons, which are released during this decay, then meet the electrons and annihilate each other, which causes them to emit gamma rays. The more radioactive isotope which is taken up by the cells indicates the cells are more active. Most hospitals that use PET will create their own isotopes on site because they have a very short half-life. We will look at how these are made in the following video tutorial. Here we have an example of our radioactive glucose with our radioactive isotope there. We have our PET scanner. You can see it's a 360 degree scanner as the gamma rays will be released in all directions and here we have a brain scan showing the levels of the brain where the radioactive isotope has been taken up more these are the red areas this is a popular six mark question from edexcel on the use of positron emission tomographers so fluorine 18 which is our radioactive isotope is built into molecules which act like glucose Tumor cells use more glucose, therefore it will collect and it will decay and emit positrons. Explain how positron emission enables the tumor to be located accurately to help the consultant with his assessment. You may use a labeled diagram to help your answer. There is a lot going on in this question, however the important part is the idea of positron emission we can use a labelled diagram in order to help us with our answer and we're interested in the location of the tumour. For this question, we need to start off talking about the fact that the isotope will decay via beta plus and that this will release positrons. Once the positrons have been released, they will collide with the electrons that exist naturally in the target organ. When the positron and the electron collide, they will annihilate each other, releasing gamma rays. And importantly, it is these gamma rays that are then picked up by the scanner. The positrons do not leave the target organ, only the gamma rays will leave the target organ, pass through the skin and be detected by the scanner. The gamma rays are released in opposite directions and are picked up by the scanner. And finally, the location of the tumour can then be detected accurately using triangulation. For our labelled diagram, we can then draw a scanner detecting the gamma rays that are being released following this positron and electron annihilation. For your six marks, we would be looking at the idea of this annihilation that releases gamma rays, the beta plus decay that occurs releasing the positrons which meet the electrons, the fact that gamma rays are picked up by the scanner, and then finally they are located via triangulation. Using PET, we can treat tumours internally. However, we can also use concentrated gamma radiation in order to kill the tumour cells externally. The gamma rays need to be concentrated so that they do not damage the healthy cells that surround the tumour cell. Gamma rays can also be used in hospitals in order to sterilise equipment such as syringes, where the gamma rays can pass through the packaging and kill any living tissue such as viruses and bacteria. As long as the equipment then remains in a sealed plastic pack, it will remain free of viruses and bacteria. When hospitals use radiation therapy, they do have to take into consideration the social and ethical issues associated with it. There are several social and ethical issues of radiation. The main one is that it's not always possible to use radiotherapy to cure medical conditions. So for patients whose medical condition cannot be treated, radiotherapy can be used as a form of palliative care. Palliative care can be used in order to reduce the symptoms or pain in order to improve the quality of life in a patient. However, it will not cure the medical condition. 
when considering whether to use radiotherapy either as a cure or as palliative care, hospitals have to take into consideration these key issues here. So the fact that the radiation can cause damage to normal cells, it can cause infertility or organ damage, it could affect the quality of life either positively or negatively, the cost, the increase or decrease to life expectancy, whether it's a cure or palliative care, whether it reduces the suffering, are there any side effects and what the effects might be on the family. There are also other social and ethical issues concerned with both radiotherapy and other hospital treatments. These include stem cell research and cloning. For any new drug or medical practice that is suggested, a lengthy testing stage will be used. This testing will go through computers, then cells and onto animals before being tested on humans. However, organisations such as PETA campaign against this heavily. A major concern of any new drug is that we don't understand the long-term benefits or long-term side effects of the drug. Even with extensive testing, by the time a drug reaches the human testing phase, things can still go wrong as was the case in the Northwick Park trials of the early 2000s, where a drug was tested on humans for the first time and led to severe side effects. In all cases, the concerns for a new drug or new form of treatment must be weighed up against the benefits of the treatment, the costs of the treatment, and most importantly, the wishes of the patient. In the next tutorial video, video 11, we will look at cyclotrons and how hospitals use them in order to produce radioactive isotopes for use in positron emission tomography.